Hello YouTubers! Well, it's time for another Tear Down, Scrap Out, Depopulate video. And today's victim is an Avaya G350 Media Gateway box. And, boy, there's a lot of blank plates on the front of this, so I'm not going to get my hopes up too high for what's inside. But hopefully there is some good stuff inside. I guess we'll find out together. So, uh, let's have a look on the outside. We got a few uh, Ethernet jacks, console jack, USB. Uh, I am not sure what those are. Are those lights? No, those looks like, oh, those are probably, those are probably optical ports. Okay. Lots of blank plates. Let's see here. Turn it around and have a look at the back. Absolutely nothing of interest on the back except the power. All right. And lots of warning signs that we are going to ignore. All right, let me get the uh, phone up on the tripod and we'll begin with the disassembly. Well, I guess we'll figure out together how to get this thing apart. Um, let's see any obvious screws. Well, okay, along the side here. Yeah, all right. Let me take these uh, mounting ears off. Allow me to get the screws that might be behind them. Nice solid angles. I like these. These come in handy for lots of things. I mean, they're, they're mounting ears here, but I use them for reinforcing the corners of stuff I build, so I save these. They come in handy. I love it when the stuff arrives with the mounting ears on it. This one's got the, the cable guide on it, too. It, that's maybe not as useful. That one may just get uh, thrown in the scrap steel. All right, so let me get the, see if I can take the top off now. All right, we need a different bit. Of course. is holding it on. But I don't see any more screws. Huh. Well, I wonder what is holding it together. Uh, it looks like it ought to. Looks like it ought to hinge up. But it doesn't seem to want to. I wonder why. Almost like there's something holding it in the middle here, but I don't see a screw. There we go. Ah, I just needed to slide back a little bit. All right. Okay, well, there is some good stuff in here, a little bit. This daughter card here, got a gold corner BGA and a fair number of chips, so there's another BGA and, yeah, there's going to be gold pins in here. All right, let me take this daughter card out and get a closer look at it. It's like the only daughter card in the thing. Got lots of slots, but they're all blank. So, there's that. That single-sided. So, not too much here. Oh, got some nice, nice chunky gold pins over here. And a fair number of them, too. Good. 
Too bad there aren't more cards in there. Those are nice gold pins. I like those. All right, and uh, now these are not optical ports on the front. They are some sort of uh, some sort of like a barrel plug or something. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, we'll set that aside. So we got in here. Well, we got we got a ram stick. That's nice. Uh, got some nice gold pins down here. Gold pins in here. Looks like there's going to be a lot of gold pins along the back where it plugs into the back plane here. That's nice. A big gold corner BGA down there. Lots of chips. There's a, something under a heat sink there. It might be another BGA. So that's nice. Alright, now this looks like this could be a little bit difficult to disassemble. Because... All of the screws holding this superstructure in are going through the PC board. So let me look at the bottom of this thing. Ah, and the bottom is blank. So that means I'm going to have to take this off to get, it looks like, and all the screws that are holding it together. All right. Well, let me commence the removing screws. So there's not, you know, an overabundance of stuff in here. It's okay. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't throw it away, but not an overabundance, but they're gonna make me work for it, obviously. Let's see here. I guess this is the same deal as the front, as the top. Let's see if I can get it to slide back, then it should tilt forward and come off. Yep, there we go. So there's the back. Now we got a couple of things on the back, but I barely call it a double-sided board. Just a, a few chips and some capacitors. But at least now I can get to all the screws and get the board out. So that's that's a beautiful thing. Um, by the way, this is probably going to be my last scrap out teardown depopulate video for a while so if you're a fan of them sorry about that but I am finally after being stuck in Florida since March am finally gonna be able to get take a little bit of a vacation it's been hard for a travel junkie like me to be stuck at home for so long but it's going to be a working vacation. I've got to get out to our ranches in Arizona and Wyoming and uh, do some some work, some maintenance, some upgrades. And also, hopefully, I'll have a little time to rest. It is going to be a working vacation. Um, I'm hoping to stop at a couple places I know on the road and maybe pick up some good scrap. We'll see. Um, also, I am hoping to visit some... Some nice gold mines while I'm out west. And uh, maybe I can get some good video at the mines, too. And maybe do a little bit of prospecting and gold panning on the creek. If, if I can jam it into my uh, busy schedule, we shall see. So... Yeah, I'll be leaving in a few days, so this will probably be the last video for a while. Alright, so something else is holding this board in. It should. Well, of course. There. It's plugged into the uh, back plane. That's what's holding it in. Alright. Oh, well, okay. So we got another little daughter board here. More gold pins. That's nice. Not a whole lot on it. It's a big chunky MLCC, so we'll see. That's a huge one. We'll see if they're magnetic. So 
get this main board out. Unplugged. Oh, look at the gold pins. My goodness, look at all the gold pins. Lovely. And it looks like they are pressed in. So that means I should be able to just pull them right out. That's good. That's excellent. I'll set this main board aside for the moment. See if I can get this uh, back plane board out. It's got a lot of screws holding it in, too. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Whatever slides in this slot up here must have its own power supply because there's a power outlet here for it to plug into. So this big top slot, whatever goes in there, must have its own independent power supply. Okay, so yes, these are all pressed in. That's nice. So I can just pull these out with pliers. So there's going to be lots of gold pins in here to mate with the pins in here. So that's that's a beautiful thing. All right. All right. Have another look at this chassis here. Okay, we got three big fans. Wow, these are pretty darn big. Plastic, as usual. I don't know if I have reefs. Oh, they're 48 volts, 0 .71, 0 0.17 amps. So these are 48 volt fans, so I really don't have a use for them. If they were 12 volts in this big, I might have a, have a use for them, but not at 48 volts. All right. So this power supply back here in the back, what do we got? Output, 49 volts, 4.6 amps. Really got no use for it. Um, let's see something. I might have to disassemble that some more because there's some heavy aluminum extrusions here. I don't know if they're actually, I think they are. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, okay. The power supply is built into a heavy aluminum U-channel extrusion. I don't really have any use for the power supply, but that's a lot of aluminum to toss out. So what I'll probably do is I'll take the power supply out and separate it from this aluminum U-channel and put this on my extruded aluminum pile. What's it gonna take to get the power supply out? Couple screws back here. And then are there screws under the sticker? No. So what's holding it in? Looks like there's there must be screws under the sticker. sticker doesn't want to peel off. That's like it's a sheet of aluminum baked on there. Huh. Let me get a knife and see if I can peel that up. There we go. Yeah, that is, that is a sheet of aluminum. Thin sheet of aluminum. All right.
and the power supply is free. There we are. Yeah, that is big heavy aluminum extrusion. I will separate the power supply from that and keep that. Got a few nut certs in it I'll have to uh, punch out, otherwise the scrapyard will complain. Alright, the rest of it I really got no use for. It's just scrap steel and some plastic fans. Right, set it aside. why these screws are not coming out. Oh, okay. Hmm. Alright. These screws just want to strip rather than come out. So, I will have to uh, work on that a little more carefully. Ah! They've got lots of uh, like epoxy or something on the end of them here to keep them from loosening up. That's why they don't want to come out. So even the ones I broke loose, the threads are all buggered up now with the epoxy and they've frozen up. Okay. Well, if I have to, I'll just use a chisel and I'll bust the bolts off and knock it out and then I'll have this free of the aluminum channel. So, let me look at this thing. This back plane. I suspect, let me see here, yes, there's the gold pins right there, lovely, pretty easy to expose them, um, they should come out pretty easy because they're only pressed in, so Expose the rest of them. Ooh, I should be wearing gloves. This is sharp. Oh, I need more gloves. I'll be bloody. All right, that's better. Yep, there they are. All right, let me see happens if I try to expose some of these here. Well, these might be a little tougher. Yeah, these are going to fight me. I'm not sure. I'll have to uh, give that some thought about how to expose the the gold inner workings of those so that when I put this through the the leech to take the gold plating off it can get in there because right now I won't be able to circulate through those little holes to see if I can just pull these out of the board entirely Let's see here. yeah there we go okay I just need to put some effort into it there's there's most of them there, and some of them are in there. So I'll just have to uh, put some effort into getting them out. All right. Ah. There we go. There we go. Leverage. That's what we need. Leverage. Ah, all right. So I'll have to pull the pins out of those, and what's stuck in the board too. So this is going to require some effort too. So I'll have to work on this for a while. 
to uh, get all these pins at least exposed so that uh, the gold leech or stripper can work on taking the gold plating off of them. But there's a lot of pins here. There's hundreds if not thousands of pins here, so make sure. Yeah, there's pins there, there, there. There's no pins here. Okay. And then if I look at this, yeah, I got more of the same here. Yeah. Lots of gold pins there. Even though they're pressed into the board, they don't want to come out. They are in there tight. Not like the Cisco ones, which tend to come out of the board fairly easily. Okay. Well, that could be a bit of a problem, but I'll figure it out. See what else we got on this board. Well, we got all these gold pins over here. We got a, a ram stick here. Which, there we go. I can say with gloves on, that's not easy. Ah, uh, what is it here? 256 megabytes. So that's a pretty old one, but got ram chips and gold fingers on it. That's nice. We got uh, a a heat sink covering something up over here. Let's see what's under that. Aha! Uh -huh. That's an IBM BGA. I've seen those on other pieces of equipment. They have some gold in them. It just takes a little work to get it out. And I got another aluminum heat sink for my, a little tiny one for my heat seat, heat seat bucket. Alright, but we got, we got a, a RAM socket here and here, two RAM sockets, each with gold pins in it. We got a compact flash socket with some nice gold pins. Got uh, a gold band oscillator here, and another one here, and another one here. And I don't see any more at the moment, but I might be missing some. Lots of big tantalum capacitors. Of course, this gold corner BGA. Lots of small chips. This side doesn't really have much on it. A few small chips. Some kind of plug there. Small. I don't know if it has gold pins in it or not. It's very small. Uh, looks like a lot of chip resistors back here. And a few MLCCs. The occasional tantalum capacitor. So I'm going to... I'm going to depopulate this board in the kiln. Basically, I want all the ICs. I want all the gold pins. Um, I want the sockets with their gold pins in them. I want the uh, Ethernet jacks, the USB jack. They've got gold pins in them. So, not a not a huge amount of stuff on this board, but a little bit. Same with this. This will go in uh, and get depopulated in the kiln. I'm going to try and take these pins out first so that the uh, the plastic around them doesn't melt and seal them in. But uh, yeah, I'll get all the chips off of this. Got a Infineon BGA there, and that should have good gold in it. And then, yeah, this one here too. I'm going to try and get these gold pins off the board before it goes in the kiln to be depopulated, just so they don't melt. This one's, this one's got one, two, three gold band oscillators on it. That's nice. Um, a small gold corner BGA, a Zilnix BGA. Um, not a whole lot else. A few small ICs. Um, gold plated fuse. I've been seeing a fair number of those lately in the telecom equipment I've been taking apart. In fact, I thought I saw somewhere. These are not gold-plated fuses, but they're fuses. Well, I saw some more gold-plated something somewhere here. Oh, there's another gold band oscillator I missed earlier. So this board has a lot of them on it. A small gold corner BGA. I don't think I noticed earlier. Alright! 
So, that was pretty quick and easy disassembly. Um, so let me get uh, this stuff depopulated and we'll look at what we've got afterwards. Sort it out. Well, I decided to do a little more work on this stuff before heading for the kiln. So I have all of the gold pins exposed. I'm not going to bother depopulating this board in the kiln right now. I mean, there's not much on it. There's a couple of chips, which might actually be magnetic, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look at them closer. And a lot of capacitors, and that's about it. But all these pins stick it up. This can just go in the gold leech or the stripper and get the uh, gold stripped off of them. And I'll put, a, I'll put a link to the gold leech up here and in the description of this video so you can see it. Now I'm going to have to take some uh, needle nose pliers and pull all the pins out of these connectors here that did not come out and stay in the board. So, But that, that won't take long. And they can go through uh, the stripper separately. Um, turns out these pins here, which the reason I can't get them off is they are soldered in. So I could cut them off. We'll see. I might cut them off before putting them in the kiln just so I don't have to sort through all the debris in the bottom of the kiln to find them. These pins right here, even though they are pressed in, I cannot get them out. Boy, they are in there tight. So I'm just going to have to um, put this board in the kiln and depopulate it and hope that the plastic doesn't melt and entomb a bunch of these pins. What I might do is what I did on this board, because the, the pins on it were uh, soldered in too. Actually, it was this one here. They were soldered in too. I just uh, broke the whole connector out of the board so that I can uh, put this through the gold stripper and uh, the pins are exposed. I don't have to worry about the, the plastic melting and entombing them. So what I might do, in fact, the more I think about it, the more I think I will. I mean, there's really nothing much here but some power components on this side of the board. Oh, and another little gold, gold plated fuse. What I might do is just cut this, uh, cut these pins out. And if I'm going to do that, I might as well cut these out too. I'll just go over to the bandsaw, cut, uh, cut these pins off, cut these pins off, and then this can go in the kiln. Oh, and by the way, I took the battery out. Bonus, the battery holder, fully gold plated. That is nice. Inside and out, even parts that don't really need to be gold plated are. That is nice. All right, so now I'm going to just take these pins off, take these pins off, then uh, put three of the four boards in the kiln, get them depopulated, and uh, we'll count up what we got. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the kiln to do its thing, I'll pull all these pins out of these connectors and set them aside. All right, I'll be back. All right, it's later in the day. The boards have been through the kiln and been depopulated. I didn't show it this time. Basically, I've been really busy packing for my trip, among other things. So I didn't show it this time. I just put them in the kiln, came back, shook them, got the parts off. But I have uh, the process in lots of other videos. Uh, so it's pretty well depopulated, all the boards. Um, some of the power components did not come off, but I'm not too worried about them. You know, torrid and some capacitors and some, some big transistors. Not too worried about those, but pretty much everything else came off the boards. I can put those in the depopulated board pile. I've got uh, gold pins here. Lots of gold pins. Uh, they all came out of uh, these uh, the ends of the connectors when I pulled them out of the boards and some of the pins stuck in them. I pulled the pins out manually with just needle nose pliers. It didn't take long. So I've got a whole bunch of gold pins here. Uh, i still got a bunch of gold pins here. Gold pins all over this thing. And of course i got some gold fingers here. And I have RAM chips on this stick that can be depopulated too later. So that's a fair amount of gold. I've got a pile here of gold plated stuff. Not all of it's gold plated. A few things aren't, but uh, mostly gold band oscillators over here. Quite a few of them. Um, and a gold plated fuse. And then I got a couple of uh, an oscillator that's not gold plated and a, and a crystal that's not gold plated. So I got that. I got all this stuff over here. This all has gold pins in it. The uh, the Ethernet jacks, the uh, the uh, um, the card slot, the uh, memory stick slots, and uh, these connectors here. The uh, 
USB connected. They all have gold pins in them. So that's good. This this pile over here is just garbage. It's uh, capacitors and inductors, transformer, uh, connectors without gold pins, little service mount inductors, um, resistor networks. And then this stuff over here is garbage too. This is the magnetics. The magnetics for all of the uh, Ethernet jacks. That's all garbage. And then over this away, you make sure it's on frame. All right, over this way, I've got a, a pile of tantalum capacitors here, black and yellow ones. Uh, this is my favorite stuff right here, the BGA chips. I've got a small pile of BGA chips. So these have a lot of gold in them. I have a video, and I've, I've confirmed this with another with another run of BGA chips, where they these are about one and an eighth percent by weight gold. You know, if you peel them apart, like so, that looks like it has a lot of gold in it, but it doesn't really. Most of the gold's in here, and this is one and an eighth percent by weight gold. So, you know, so I got a few more BGA chips here. That's nice. Um, got a pile of IC chips here. Got uh, lots of small ones and a few sort of medium-sized flat packs. A few RAM chips. Um, other semiconductors here. I got some transistors, some LEDs. Uh, not sure what these are. I'd have to look them up. Let's see. 29152WU. I don't know. MIC. That just sounds like maybe a house number. I don't know if I'll find that, but some sort of driver, probably for a voltage uh, booster buck converter, I would imagine. Big diode. And, uh, oh, what is that? Yeah, that's some sort of surface mount transistor. So, so got that. I uh, got, uh, let's see, what else did I get over here? I got uh, the mounting ears, which are useful as uh, corner brackets for reinforcing corners on stuff. Um, oh, and I forgot these. They're, they're so diminutive and hard to see. I've got a pile of uh, MLCCs here, and I've got my magnet. Let's see what we got here. Well, most of them are magnetic, but a few of them are not. So, okay. So I got uh, my magnetic file and my non-magnetic file on the MLCCs. And then over here, here's the power supply. So I finally got it separated from the aluminum channel it was mounted in, and it had an aluminum cover over it too. So it's a fair amount of aluminum right there. Plus I've got that aluminum heat sink that was on top of the BGA chip. So a little bit of aluminum. The power supply, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna toss it. No use for it. So anyway, that's what I got from the uh, Avaya box. Um, not an overabundance of good stuff. If it wasn't for all of the gold pins, I would say this was really hardly worth the effort. Um, certainly, if you get one of those boxes, you need to get it for free because there is not a whole lot of profit in it if you buy it. Probably, I would say, no profit if you buy it. So get it for free. If you get it for free, you're going to make a little bit of money. But, you know, it's, it's not going to keep you in beer and burgers for long. That's for darn sure. But, uh... Fair number of gold pins kind of saved the day, I think, with this with this one. All right, kind of an abbreviated, quickie teardown video. I didn't go into as much detail as I normally did, but you can watch some of my other videos and and see how I, I go into greater detail about how I do stuff. Anyway, if you liked it, give it a like. Thank you very much. Um, subscribe if you're so inclined to see future videos. And remember, I'm going to be off the air for a little while as I'm traveling, but when I get back, we'll be hitting it hot and heavy with uh, lots of neat stuff. And keep it safe out there as always, and I'll see you later. Bye.